I'm satisfied with this signboard. My name's Kohei Yokoyama. I'm 30 years old and just opened my store, a long-held dream of mine. Starting today, I'm going to work hard to make Cafe and Dining Co. a success. The style of my restaurant is to target moms during lunchtime by serving lunch plates and sweets, and to target celery men in the evening with a menu of western dishes and drinks. I finally achieved my dream of opening a restaurant, and I felt incredibly happy. Of course, I'm confident in my cooking skills, but I know that's not enough to make sales. That's why I put a lot of effort into advertising. I created social media accounts for the restaurant, aiming to attract more female customers with attractive photo posts. I also plan to distribute discount coupons through stories. Additionally, I placed flyers in mailboxes with discount coupons attached. Moreover, I decided to hold a grand opening fair. So, with all this effort put into advertising, I thought I could attract customers, but... Customers aren't coming at all! Two weeks after opening, only a few groups of customers had visited. A few customers with discount coupons came, but there are still no repeat visitors. Every day, I prepare the ingredients, but most of it ends up being thrown away, leaving me with nothing but a silent store and a daily loss. Why is this happening? There are a lot of people passing by, and I thought I got a good location. Is my cooking not good enough? No, that can't be. One day, as I was about to put up the store's signboard, I overheard some women passing by saying something that caught my attention. Oh, another store has changed. Cafe and dining? I didn't know there was a place like this here. I wonder how long it will last this time. Huh? What do you mean by that? Curious about what the woman said, I decided to look up the history of the stores that had been in this tenant space. It turns out that this place, which I thought was a good location, had been home to several failed restaurants. The real estate agent didn't mention anything, but of course, they wouldn't if they wanted to close a deal. Some stores didn't even last three months. No wonder the rent was so cheap despite the location. Oh, I should have asked more questions about the old building. I want to punch my past self. But no, the location is still good. There are a lot of people passing by, so I just need to hang in there. There is no time to stand still. Determined to get customers somehow, I took every spare moment to hand out flyers. Cafe Dining Co. just opened recently. We're offering opening discounts right now. We've got delicious original sweets, so please stop by if you can. Oh, I'm in a hurry today. Maybe next time. I didn't give up despite the red ink and continued handing out flyers every day. I also kept updating social media. Then one day... In the quiet store, the sound of the doorbell echoed after a long time. That day, a customer finally came in during lunchtime after quite a while. I was excited to give them the best service I could and looked up to see who had entered. But then, I was shocked. A super delinquent looking girl just walked in! With blonde hair, a scutcheon jacket, and lots of piercings, she looked like a typical delinquent girl. W welcome uh, Are you alone? Uh, please feel free to sit anywhere you like. She nodded slightly to my greeting. After looking around the store, she sat at the end of the counter. She stared at the menu for a while, and then looked up at me with a frown. What's the recommendation here? W well, it might seem a bit heavy for the season, but I recommend the fluffy omelette rice. It's my specialty, with an omelette filled with cheese, making it really creamy. Then I'll have that. Got it! Since it was a long-awaited customer, I put extra effort into the cooking. Here you go, fluffy omelette rice! When I placed it in front of her, she just stared at it silently. Please take your time and enjoy it! Sitting at the counter, I was curious about her reaction, so I secretly watched her. And then... She muttered softly as she took a bite of the omelette rice, her face relaxing into a smile. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Seeing her show such a happy expression for a moment, I felt relieved. Seeing a customer's delighted face is one of the rewards of running a restaurant, I think. Thank you for the meal. Thank you very much. She finished the omelette rice perfectly. 
We didn't talk much after that, but looking at the empty plate, I could tell she was satisfied. In the end, she was the only customer that day. But, remembering that smile, I felt motivated to do my best again tomorrow. After that, the girl started coming to the restaurant every day during lunchtime. We offered takeout as well, and sometimes she orders takeout when she doesn't have classes in the afternoon. At first, I was too scared of her appearance to even talk to her. But eventually, she started responding to my greetings. Hello. Oh, welcome. I finally gathered the courage to ask her name, and it turns out she is Lara Yoisaki, a student at a nearby women's college about a 10 minute walk from here. Will it be the usual today? Yeah, I'll have the usual omelette rice. She always came alone and sat at the counter. She always ordered the same dish, the fluffy omelette rice that she first ordered. But now, she had started talking a bit, and I realized that despite her flashy appearance and quiet demeanor, she's actually a nice person. Lara-chan usually comes to the store a little after noon, and after finishing her meal, she spends a little time reading her textbooks. That day, I placed a plate with cheesecake near Lara-chan, who had just opened her textbook. This is a cheesecake I'm currently testing. Please feel free to have it as dessert if you like. Huh? Really? It's just a test, so there's no charge. In return, I would like to hear your honest feedback. Thanks! When Lara-chan is eating something delicious, her usually intimidating aura softens. Watching her happily enjoy the food makes me feel happy too. The texture of the rare cheese is perfect! And I like the hint of lemon that comes through. Really? I'm glad you liked it! Personally, I think it could be a bit firmer. I see. Got it. Thank you. You're really dedicated. Yeah. I want to confidently serve the best food to my customers. So I don't want to cut corners on my studies or cooking research. That kind of dedication really makes you look like a true professional chef. It's cool. R really Thanks. The delicious food brought us closer, and we gradually became friends. One day... Hey Kohei-san, was it always your dream to open a restaurant? Larishan asked me this while she was eating spaghetti, which was unusual for her to order. Yeah, it was. There wasn't a special reason, but I guess it all started because I like cooking. After attending a culinary school, I spent three years in Italy, and then worked at Me Costa. Huh? You mean at that famous place? Wow, that's impressive! So, your parents supported you? Or were they chefs too? She seemed interested in the story, so I smiled and shook my head. No, not at all. My mom is a housewife, and my dad is just an ordinary salary man. But even a non-expert can tell that running a restaurant is tough, so they were really against it. It was a tough time, I tell her, remembering those days. So you went ahead and opened this restaurant despite your parents' opposition? No, I kept studying for the business and learning how to cook while continuously persuading them. It wasn't easy, but eventually, they accepted my passion. I see. That's amazing. Huh, I wonder. Looking back, I think there was some stubbornness involved too. I felt frustrated, like my parents didn't believe in my passion or even in me. But I also understood that they were worried about me, so I didn't want to dismiss their concerns. So, I kept talking it out and expressing my feelings. Right now, my goal is to stabilize the business and make them feel relieved, since their worries are somewhat justified. The more I talk about it, the less it feels like something worth sharing. It's kind of embarrassing. As I scratched my head, Lara gave me a sincere and beautiful smile. No. I think it's a really wonderful story. You didn't cut ties with your parents, you convinced them and chose the path you wanted to live. Thanks. Both are really important to me. Both are really important. Lara seemed to be reflecting on my words as if savoring them. Yeah, it's really wonderful. It's time! It's time! It's time! Whoa! What the heck? The sudden loud voice breaks the silence, and I jump in surprise. Lara says, ah, uh, and reaches for her phone. It's an alarm to remind me to prepare for my afternoon class. That's a pretty unique alarm sound, huh? Well, I've got afternoon classes, so I have to go. Lara gathers her things and stands up. After paying the bill, she heads out as usual. 
I was about to see her off, but then, she suddenly turned back to me. Thank you, Kohei-san. Huh? Oh, um, thank you too, as always. Come back again, Lara-chan. I was confused by her sudden thanks, but she just smiled warmly in response. Wondering about the unusual behavior, I watched her leave for university. A few days later, Lara-chan suddenly stopped coming to the store. She had been coming every day, so when she didn't come at all, it really bothered me. I hope it wasn't something I said that was too heavy for her. Even though she stopped coming, the situation with few customers remained unchanged. My priority now should be how to attract more customers. But I couldn't get her last smile out of my mind. I can't go on like this. I decided to stay up all night thinking about new ways to promote the store. A few weeks later, something unexpected happened. Arabiata, please. And a Caesar salad, and hamburger steak with grated radish sauce. Got it, please wait a moment. For some reason, my store suddenly started thriving. Sometimes it was even fully booked, and I was now urgently looking to hire more staff. Sorry for the wait, here's your arabiata. The hamburger steak will be ready in just a bit. Wow, this looks delicious. I really love the arabiata here. I wasn't familiar with arabiata before, but it smells so good. Really? Could we get a small plate? I'd love for him to try some. Of course. Most of the repeat customers were relatively affluent people, like university professors. Sometimes young students would come by too. People even came from far away, though I still didn't understand why. It wasn't the target demographic I initially aimed for, but I was having a very fulfilling time. One day, during this busy period, after finishing the lunch shift and taking a short break. Welcome! Sorry, but the lunch shift is over. We'll reopen for dinner at si- Hello, Kohei-san. Lara-chan! It was Lara-chan at the entrance, visiting for the first time in about a month. Sorry to bother you during your break. I wanted to talk to you about something. Is now a good time? Sure, come on in. It's hot outside. I led the three of them to a table. After bringing them some tea, Lara-chan began to speak. Let me introduce you to my parents. Noticing the resemblance, I guessed it might be her parents, and I bowed my head slightly. We came together today to thank you, Kohei-san. Kohei-san, you saved me. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. I'm Lara's father. And I'm her mother. Thank you for taking care of Lara. No, thank you. Lara-chan has always been a great help to me as well. But did I do something that deserves this level of thanks from you all? I thought about it for a moment, but had no idea what they could be thanking me for. Lara met my gaze, then shyly scratched her cheek. On the last day I came here, I asked you about how you opened your store. Right, Kohei-san? Yeah, you stopped coming after that, so I was worried I might have said something wrong. No, it was the opposite, actually. The opposite? What do you mean? I have a dream to become a designer after graduation, and eventually start my own brand. But when I talked to my parents about it, they opposed the idea. She was talking about her own dream. That's why she was so interested in how I dealt with my parents when opening the store. I may be young, but I run a company. It's called the Yoisaki Hotel Group. What? The Yoisaki Hotel? The Yoisaki Hotel Group is currently one of the fastest growing hotel groups in Japan. I recently saw a news article online about them expanding overseas. I founded the company, but in the early days, it was a struggle. We were in the red, and it was hard just to get enough to eat. I also caused my wife a lot of hardship. It was tough just surviving. Starting your own brand isn't something to be taken lightly. Nowadays, the hotel business is going well, but we couldn't support our daughter's dream of becoming a designer because we feared she would struggle as we did. If she was going to walk a thorny path, we would rather have her work at our company and live comfortably. I understood where they were coming from, but not being supported was frustrating. I even thought about cutting ties with them, but when I heard Kohei-san's story, it hit me. I realized I hadn't tried everything yet. Giving up just because they opposed me once was stupid. Both my parents' feelings and my dream are important, 
so why not talk it out until we're all satisfied? Lara-chan smiled brightly. A smile that was hard to believe came from the same person who first entered the store. So, your mind cleared up, huh? Our daughter repeatedly talked to us about her dream. It might have been the first time she ever opened up to us like that. She was so determined to pursue her dream, and we were surprised. We always saw her as her cute little girl, but she's grown up now. Seeing her work so hard towards something made us realize it would be unsupportive to oppose her. So, does that mean... Yes, they said they'd support me. It's all thanks to you, Kohei-san. Really, thank you so much. With that, Lara-chan and her parents bowed deeply to me. I felt like I had been saved somehow, understanding Lara-chan's feelings. And we really wanted to thank you, Kohei-san. Lara-chan's parents raised their heads and said something unbelievable. We thought about what we could do to show our gratitude, and we decided to promote your store for you. Huh? So that's why! I was surprised by their words. It made sense now. That's why there was suddenly an increase in customers. Our daughter told us about your situation, Kohei-san. We thought that would be the best way to thank you. Do you remember when she took out food from your store? We also had some, and it was so delicious that we knew your cooking was excellent. Thank you so much! I had no idea it was thanks to your promotion that my store got more customers. I thought the increase in customers was solely due to their promotion, but soon after, I learned it wasn't just that. But you see, just promoting blindly wouldn't have had the same effect. So, we humbly started by analyzing your target demographic. Huh? Despite how good your food is, the fact that the store was empty meant either the target demographic was wrong or the store's layout made it uninviting. The latter would require major renovations, but the former could be fixed with a slight adjustment. And it turns out we were right. Kohei-san, you said you were targeting moms during the day and salarymen at night, right? I found out about this place because you handed me a flyer, but the extremely low prices made me hesitate. Lara-chan was right. I nodded quietly. It may seem like a safe bet, but this area has a lot of wealthy people. The main station is next door, and it's easy to misunderstand the main demographic here. I see. Oh, is that why there are so many independent shops around here too? It might be because of the area, but I think it's related. I finally understood. I had attracted the wrong crowd with my cheap coupons. The right move was to promote my experiences, like training in Italy and working at the Miracota. So, we reached out to our friends, employees, and business partners who fit your target demographic. I recommended it to a professor. They were thrilled to find out about such a place. Seeing how much thought they put into promoting my store made me feel deeply grateful, and I felt a lump in my throat. Thank you. Because of you, we are almost fully booked every day, and I'm short on staff. If this keeps up, the business might stabilize, and I could finally invite my parents. I still need to be careful for the next three years, but... I think I can finally put their minds at ease. Once people know about it and try your food, I'm sure they'll become loyal customers. Have confidence in your cooking. It's really delicious. We'll keep coming back too. Hearing these words from life veterans and business pros like Lara's parents, I couldn't hold back my tears any longer. Since then, Lara has started coming to the store again, sitting at her usual spot at the counter. And today, she's here again before the dinner rush. Her parents are coming too. Hmm, what should I order? With my parents here, I can try the things I usually pass on. So many choices. Oh, I baked a chiffon cake earlier, because I knew your parents were coming. What? I want that. Thanks, Kohei. Hey, Kohei. You know, at first, I came to this store because no one else was here. Hey! I couldn't help but react to her sudden confession. Wait, wait, wait. That's, that's not what I meant. Of course the food was delicious, but that's not what I'm trying to say. Then what? Uh, well, at some point, I started looking forward to the time we spent together. Just the two of us. But now that's not really possible, is it? So, you know... 
Huh? I'm not dense enough to miss what she's implying. With me? Just as Lara is about to say it, a door chime interrupts. Good evening. We were so excited we came right at opening time. Wait, were we interrupting? At the exact moment the store opened, Lara's parents entered. I snapped back to reality and hurriedly composed myself, greeting them with a welcome. Were we in the way? N no not at all. Lara moves to the table with her parents and starts discussing the menu recommendations. More customers arrive, eagerly anticipating the food they're about to enjoy. While watching them, I take a moment to send a message to my parents. Dad, Mom, I opened the store. I'll treat you. So please, come and try it soon. Fulfilling a dream isn't easy. That's why people weigh the time and effort it takes against the dream itself. Go ahead, I... There's no absolute answer, but I believe there's one thing you must never ignore. That's each person's feelings. When opinions clash, take a step back and consider why the other person feels that way. By respecting each other's feelings, you can maintain strong connections for a lifetime.